Summary of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is told from the point of view of Chief Bromden. He has been a patient at an unnamed Oregon mental hospital for 10 years and has terrible fog dreams that make it hard for him to do anything. Chief Bromden is aware of what's going on around him, but he has been pretending to be deaf and dumb for the whole time of his commitment. All of the patients on the ward are guys, and they are split into two groups, acutes, who can be cured, and chronics, who can't. Nurse Ratched is very strict with everyone in the ward. People who try to speak out against her are given shock therapy or, in the worst cases, a lobotomy as a punishment. Randall McMurphy is the main character of the book. When he comes to the ward after being transferred from a Pendleton work farm, it's the start of a new age of freedom. McMurphy tells both the acutes and the chronics that he likes to bet and sleep with women. After the first group therapy session, he says Ratched breaks the rules. He wins his bet with the other patients that he can make Ratched lose her cool in his first week. Ratched wouldn't let the men watch the World Series during group therapy because it was scheduled to air while Ratched was cleaning the ward. As a protest, McMurphy didn't do his chores and instead sat in front of the blank TV. The other men join in. Ratched is furious and tells them to go back to work, but the men refuse. Mr. Murphy is very happy with his win. The other patients on the ward are waiting for Ratched to get back at McMurphy by sending him to shock treatment. But she is afraid that sending him away will make him a hero, and after some time, the other men will realize that McMurphy is just a selfish coward. McMurphy quickly learns that when you are being held against your will, like he is, the hospital staff decides how free you are. He used to think that when his time was up, he would be able to leave. He starts to follow the strict rules because he doesn't want to risk his chance of getting out. But it's too late, the other patients already see McMurphy as their leader against Ratched. As the other patients learn that McMurphy has obeyed her, Charles Cheswick loses it and drowns in the pool. The doctor thinks it may have been a suicide. McMurphy is upset about Cheswick's death and knows that the other guys think badly of him. He acts like he is obeying for a little while longer, then punches through the nurse station window while Ratched sits inside. This is because she took away his access to the game room as a punishment for protesting the men's World Series. McMurphy plans a fishing trip for himself and 10 of his patients. On the boat, he's mostly not there below deck, so the men can steer and catch big fish on their own, making them feel free, in charge, and manly. McMurphy also comes up with a plan for Billy Bibbit to sneak a prostitute named Candy Star into the ward and lose his virginity to her. The men return from the trip feeling powerful. McMurphy and Chief Bromden get in a fight with some of the staff after they taunt George Sorensen in the shower after their fishing trip. Both McMurphy and Chief Bromden are sent to Disturbed for shock treatment. Ratched brings him back to the ward to debunk the myth that McMurphy is immune to the treatments. McMurphy is urged by the men to escape, but he uses Bibbit's planned date that evening as an excuse not to leave. After giving Mr. Tickle a bribe, the men sneak candy into the ward. There is a big party where people drink, smoke, and Bibbit loses his virginity. Dale Harding tells McMurphy that he needs to run away to Mexico. McMurphy says he will, but he falls asleep instead. In the morning, the helpers find all of the guys. Nurse Ratched finds Bibbit with Candy and tells him she will tell his mom. He cuts his own throat and dies because he is so upset. McMurphy tackles Ratched and rips her uniform because she thinks Ratched killed Bibbit. And then she sends McMurphy to have a lobotomy. He comes back to the ward as a chronic. But her power is gone. A lot of the guys leave the hospital or move to different wards. Chief Bromden does an act of kindness by suffocating McMurphy with a pillow, and then he escapes the hospital after throwing the impossible-to-lift control panel out of a window. About the author. Kessie was born in Colorado. He and his family then moved to Springfield, Oregon. While he was in college at the University of Oregon, he married Norma Faye Haxby, the girl he had loved in high school. In 1958, Kessie went to Stanford University to study creative writing. 
He also joined a study called Project MKULTRA, which looked at how psychedelic drugs affected people. He worked at the Veterans Hospital as a night helper. His experiences there led to the creation of the novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.